Welcome back. All right, so this short class, this tutorial, is for moving into Ekapada Supta Virasana. Ekapada is Eka, or Pada is foot. So Eka, one, one leg, we're going to take into a straight leg and one leg into Virasana. All right, so why is that a good thing? So the fronts of our thighs, our quadriceps, are usually very tight. The thighs press forward, the thighs are holding us, balancing us, and we're often finding that we're lengthening the hamstrings. So the fronts of the thighs don't get much stretch, but it has to do with um, the pelvis and what's happening with the pelvis. So if the hamstring is tight, if the quadricep is tight, it affects your pelvis, it affects your lower back and your whole posture. So <clears throat> this is something that people love to hate. So I will just ask you now to have two bolsters, two, um, two blankets, and a strap. So for those of you that struggle with this pose, I'll show the most built up version and then we can go down from there, okay? So first thing that you'll do is take one of your bolsters and we'll actually take two bolsters, okay? So I'm gonna build it up, and I'm gonna sit on the front end. So oftentimes, if you have any kind of condition in your knees or your ankles are tight, then you need to sit up on a little bit more height, all right? So I'm gonna shift these bolsters. I'm gonna sit down on the bolster, and then I'm going to bring one leg in Virasana. I'll have a blanket for my head as well, in case I need that. And then I'll take one blanket for the knee. Okay, so the way I'm gonna come into this is first, just sit on the edge of the bolster. And now I'm going to bring my right leg back. So from here, grab hold of the front of the ankle, slide the toes back, and bring the foot onto the floor, so I'm in Virasana. I'm on the front of the ankle, I have enough space for the ankle, so looking at your ankle that it's not bulging out to the side. So I've given it enough space, and then I'm going to lie down, first keeping the knee bent, but shifting down a little bit, I'm gonna tuck the pelvis. So I'm tucking the lower back, I'm tilting the pelvis, and then this bolster will be against the back body. Keep the, the foot on the floor. All right, so now in case I'm gonna need that blanket, I'll just take it and show you to begin with. So have the blanket under the knee, right up to the, the top of the shin bone. Okay, this thigh is parallel, it's not moving out to the side. Both hips are in line. Okay, from here, let's just take the blanket so it's under that knee. I'm going to eventually straighten this leg. So as you come down, make sure your bolsters are right in the center so you are coming back one vertebrae at a time. Now the way I started this is I tilted the bolsters slightly to the Virasana leg side. So it's not straight, it's moving a little bit toward the right. So as I come down, lift the hips, tuck the tailbone under, and then I have a blanket here for the head. So I'll just adjust that. So the whole upper back is supported. You can bring your arms out to the side. Now I wanna just release the hips down and at the same time, lengthen the tailbone. Press that knee down. And with this bent knee foot, the left foot, Use that to press into, so I don't want to lean to the left or to the right. Okay, usually what will happen is I'll start leaning to the side that the opposite of the Virasana leg. So use that foot, press it into the floor, keep yourself in the center, and then <clears throat> as you feel that you're able to now to start to straighten the leg, you can keep the knee bent like this, you can practice this way, the thing about the blanket is you want to 
move the knee down toward the blanket so you start to extend and lengthen this quadricep. The hamstring is compacting, it's moving, it's not no longer stretching, it is moving in the opposite direction of the, the quadricep that's stretching. Okay, press the knee down, and then I'm gonna straighten that leg, press out through the heel, and then just feel that I'm balanced on both sides, the left and the right side. From here, you're lengthening. If you want it, if you don't feel like you're getting much of a stretch, then you can come up and you can take, take the bolster, one of the bolsters away, but we'll do that in a moment. Okay, just be aware of what you feel in the front of the ankle, stretch in the front of the foot, and the outer ankle bone is not moving to the baby toe side of the foot, but the outer ankle bone is moving in. And then bring your arms over your head and hold onto the elbows. Extend, lengthening the upper abdominal area away from the pelvis. Just send the pelvis down and then lengthening from the pubic bone up. Keep the left foot active so the heel is pressing down and away. The toes are moving back towards you. Right thigh is descending. So the best thing to do is to practice this quite regularly and stay as long as you can, building up the time that you do that. In the beginning, it might be quite uh, painful if you have never practiced this, but it's something that will overall be great for you establishing more stability for the pelvis and more awareness in the hips, the leg connection, and your posture. All right, extend the arms, bring the hands down, and to come up, I want you to press into the hands, lift up, bend the knee, and come up. Okay, now I'm gonna take this blanket over to the other side. Bend the knees. Okay, sitting on the bolster evenly with both feet on the floor. I'm going to now bring this leg into Virasana. Take the thumb at the back of the knee and bring that thumb right to the top of the calf muscle. There's two calf muscles, so you're moving them down and you're moving it slightly to the side. All right, <coughs> take your hand on your ankle, bring your foot back. Place yourself right on the center of the ankle, center of the foot. Keep this foot grounded and bring it in a little bit further. Now to go forward, to tilt the pelvis, my pelvis is gonna be coming closer toward the end of the mat. So in order to keep my back from getting over arched, I'm gonna lift up, slide the foot down a little bit as I tilt the pelvis so that I'm again supported the lower back is supported, and then that blanket is underneath the knee. So with the other foot, just making sure you're balanced, take your hands at the top of the lower back and extend it down and bring your arms out to the side. Outer ankle, instead of coming onto that little toe side, press the outer ankle and move that thigh bone down. You can look down and see, is your thigh parallel with the other leg? Press the knee down, opening the front groin, lengthening. Be aware of the back of the leg as well. And then when you're ready, stretch that leg down. So I'm pressing the heel down and grounding the back of the heel, not so much pressing out, but pressing down and then drawing the toes back toward, toward me. So the leg is active and I stay in this position where both hips are feeling that they're stable and in line with one another. So if you have your balance, bring your arms over, hold onto the elbows. One more thing I wanted to show you. If you don't feel balanced, if you haven't gone into it, maybe 
This thigh is a little bit more tight, this hip. You can have, I have a slanting plank here. You could use a blanket, you could use a rolled towel, and I can place it under, under the hip that I feel it's a little bit, so I'm, if I'm rolling to this side, I could use that rolled towel or that plank so that I bring balance to both sides. So whether you have balance or not will depend on your quadriceps, how open they are, your hip, your front groin, and then bring the arms over, holding the elbows, lifting the arms up. Now press the knee down. So I've taken a half a blanket there, so it's not very high. You can always take it higher, depending on the height that you're sitting on. Descend the knee, observe your upper chest, lower back lengthening up to the upper chest. And then extend your arms out, and then bring your hands down. I'm going to bend the knee now, take that little plank out. come up, sit back on that bolster, and bring my feet out. Okay, now maybe you've been there for a while. You can stay for longer. It depends on how you're feeling in that. If you don't need as much height, if you don't require as much height, maybe you take one bolster away, and you can have a blanket for the head. So I'm tilting the bolster this way. It may be that you can sit on the floor. Okay, so I'm sitting on the floor. You can also have a blanket or you could have be on a block. It depends on how deep your bolster is. All right, so I'm gonna start with that bent knee. Take my foot back. Be on the front of the ankle, front of the foot. Lift that inner thigh, roll that outer thigh. Now I'm finding that it's probably gonna be a little bit too low. If you do, just have a little bit of height. Okay, and start with your knee bent. Come into it the same way, lift the knee, extend through the front of the ankle, move your leg down, and you can have that blanket again. So I mentioned you can have the blanket folded a little bit higher. If the knee was higher and you weren't able to take it down, a little bit more stiffness in the ankle, then you can take that higher height. So I'll just show you that. Coming forward. Now with that higher height, I'm falling over to that side. So I don't really need that higher height. I'll just take the lower one. So come up, tilt the pelvis, lift it. You can just lift the knee up off the floor and give that length to the front of the ankle. And you know that your hips are adjusted. Lengthen the head. And now move the knee down. Extend. Bring your arms over your head. Hold on to the elbows. So you can feel that extension. Be with whatever you feel. Press the heel down, draw the toes back. And then I'm gonna come up and show you one more way. So we'll do it with the other side. So <clears throat> bringing the knee back onto the floor, bend the knee. Extend the leg. So when we're in this virasana, the, the knees are opening. They're really getting that circulation through the front of the knee and the back of the knee is not getting as much. But when you open the knee, then there's that flushing, which brings in 
the blood into all these different areas where it's been cut off, which is a healthy thing to do. Now take your calf down, bring your foot back. So I was going to show you another way to do the bolster. So you can also, if you didn't have the higher bolster to sit on, you could also take a bolster behind you to get it to come up a little bit more and you can take a block there so that it supports it. Okay. All right, bending the knee, left knee, take the foot back, be on the front of the ankle, release the inner thigh, bend the knee and come down. And now I'm going to slide the foot forward. So I'm lengthening the front of the ankle and I'm lengthening the shin bone, moving the hips down So this is that bolster. You're a little bit lower here than when I had the double bolster. The hips are moving down, but the lower back is supported. Pressing that foot into the floor, stabilize yourself. Press down into this thigh and lengthen, and then bring the leg down. So just see that you're bringing it in line. And then you can have that blanket for the back of the knee, the lower knee and use that to, to find that length through the thigh. Reach your arms up, extend. Now, depending on what position you found yourself having more pain, <laughs> more sensation, practice that for a while, and then you can start to lower the props down. You can come down to a few blocks, you can come down to a few blankets. So that gradually, as you practice more and more, you'll start to bring more awareness into that thigh, you'll have more release. You can stay on each side five minutes, or a couple minutes, and then build up. Extend your arms. And then I'm going to bring my hands down. Come back up, bend your knee, sit back up, take the blanket away, and then come back into Dandasana. Straighten the legs. So if you have a lot of sensation in the knees, they're tight, just uh, let that feeling of the blood flowing into the, into the backs of the knee and front of the knee, come in gradually and then straighten the legs, extend your heels away and draw your toes back towards you. Okay, now if you wanted to go a little bit lower and you're ready for that, you can also use the blocks to support the back. Okay, so I'm just going to run the blocks spine-wise. I may <coughs> have one block to sit on. And then come back, straighten the leg, and bring the right leg back. So after you've been practicing for a while and you've started to open up and you have more, I'm going to take that away, have more <coughs> comfortability with the pose. You lift up, take your tailbone away. I'm bringing the block a little bit more on the upper spine and having one block for the head. Okay, thighs moving down. Bring your arms out to the side. With the arms, now I'm balancing, because I can feel I'm shifting a little bit to the left, so I want to shift a little bit to the right, 
to send down. So with each new way you do it, you're going to feel something, something new. Keep the front ribs moving down. Inner thigh, moving down, outer groin moving down. You can take your arms over your head. Have the block close enough in that you can hook your arms around the block. And from there, press into the block and lengthen that knee away from you. Just watch your balance. You're falling to one side. Have either a rolled towel or a blanket. Lifting that hip up so that you come more into that balanced state between the left and the right. So just be aware of your body, what's happening in your body, where you can use the support, where the tightness is. And we've come down lower, so just observe the outer ankle, inner ankle. If it's bulging out to the right, then you need to come up on more height. Extend the arms out. And then bring the hands up. Come back up. Come up. Head coming up last. So lift from the back where you were over that block. And then bring the foot out. Coming back into Dandasana. I'll scoot these blocks back a little bit. So I'm shifting them over a little bit to the side. I'm bringing my left, left leg back now. Left foot. So sitting. Drawing that ankle back. So sometimes it takes a while to warm up to. For some of you, maybe stiffer, and it takes a longer time. If you're very flexible, of course, it won't take very long. But just watch that you're getting that balance and you're not overarching the back. The back is getting the length. The front body is lengthening. And as I come down here now, I'm lifting up and drawing that buttocks out, lengthening the thigh, lengthening the knee. And I'm going to take a little bit of extra support under that hip. Balance the shoulders, the shoulder blades. You can also take the blocks across, across the shoulder blades. And then lengthen the leg. Just look down. See that you're balanced. Descend the buttocks, spread the buttocks, widen. Tailbone's moving down. Upper back is, or lower back is moving toward the heel. And the upper lower back is moving up toward the chest. See that your front ribs aren't moving up toward the ceiling. Lengthen the back ribs. Create a little space there. Of course, if you needed the blanket at this point too, you could have that blanket. So just have the blanket when, you, when the knee is lifted. And when the knee is lifted, it may be that because of the height that you're on, you, if you press the knee down, you're going to you're going to do something to make your body go out of alignment. So maintaining that alignment first, finding the right support for yourself, and then as you practice, gradually reducing that. And then you're going to bend your knee, bring your foot back on the floor, hands by your hips, lift up, and then bring that leg out, straighten the leg, come back to Dandasana, Fingertips behind you, and just be aware of sensations in your legs. As you extend the legs, lift the chest up away from the floor, move the thighs down. And then release. Okay, so I hope this helped give you some idea of 
How would you use the bolsters for Supta Virasana? How would you use more height, less height? How would you stabilize? You can also use blankets as well. If you have blankets, you can have the blankets folded lengthwise like this, and then have a few blankets according to how much height that you need. All right, so you can get curious around your house, find what you need, but just find the the props that will help you to balance. And then as you're there, stay there longer. Breathe into it. Don't be afraid of a little bit of pain. It'll go away. Um, and then lower it and continue to practice. Now, if you have any kind of a knee issue, a knee problem, one thing that is a nice thing to do, depending on your condition, you can try this if you have any kind of pain coming when you sit in Virasana. You can take that strap behind the knee, and when you take your foot back, just make a little bit of space by pulling. Pulling here, let's say it was the meniscus on the inner side of the leg, by pulling. But it just also gives it a little bit of space. So oftentimes that will be enough to have you feel that there's enough release of tension there that you can go into the pose. The more you can get blood flow into that area, the better. But of course, you don't want to do anything that's going to damage your knee further if you have a knee injury. So check with your doctor or check with your yoga teacher in your area. OK? Thank you for joining me. Namaste.